So, the second episode of the Dying Light Ask Me Anything is already here. This quickly. The last one only came out two weeks ago, so the fact that we're already on to episode two that soon, that's a bit of a surprise to me, but hey, it's a pleasant surprise nonetheless. And I get the feeling that they're probably being pretty quick about these AMA episodes as a means to get them out of the way, whatever questions they want to answer before E3, which is where they'll probably show off the big guns. I just get that vibe, but who knows? That's just me speculating. But either way, we already got a second episode, and I'm here to react to it just like the first one. If you haven't seen the first one, I definitely recommend checking it out. You'll find it on the channel. Also, before the video starts, if you could just make sure to leave a like as well as subscribe if you haven't already, as well as the uh, notifications, have those on and set them to all notifications. And with that being said, let's get to the reaction itself. From the footage we have already seen, Aiden seems much less confident and more nervous than Crane. Will the game's plot focus on his growth as a person, the same way the first game focused a lot on Crane and his changing motives? So the answer is yes, absolutely. So depending on your choices, Aiden can be a little bit more selfish or a little bit more focused on the collective and the needs of others. And I think this is the most important okay. uh, thing that you will decide. Okay, so it seems that they're keeping his character, like, like, like he just said. They're gonna have a, a point where this new character starts off, Aiden. But it seems at the same time they're being a bit open so that it's easier in order to develop his character depending on how you play so that there's more impact in the story. Which, it's nothing new, but still, the way they're going about it, the way they're describing it, it sounds interesting. I'm definitely curious to see how it'll play out in-game and the decisions that we need to make and how Aiden will react and what he causes and uh, the effects from his decisions and the consequences that come from them. Hopefully this time around, this character will actually be an interesting protagonist because one of the many problems of the Dying Light 2 story was the character was basically nothing. Pretty much nothing. The, the story of the first game is not very good. It's probably the weakest aspect of that entire game, but hopefully they've really improved upon that with the sequel. GRE. Will the GRE make a return or at least be a player in what led I, up to the event in Dying Light 2. Is. I understand that DL2 is set far in the f future from DL1, but I find it a bit difficult to imagine how- You know what, let me look this up real quickly. Because I have no idea what GRE means. Oh, Global Relief Effort. Okay. Okay. I had no idea. See, j just another plot element that no one from the first game remembers aside from a few. So... Okay, yeah, global relief effort. L let's go back to the question. How an organization with enough money and power to fly in drops and antis in daily could disappear if the virus wasn't wiped out? Okay, so they're putting actual focus into exploring the antagonists. Okay. And you get rewarded for exploration for, from the sound of it? Like, by going out of your way, you get to learn all these little, these little details about the factions in the game? Okay, okay down for that. The next question is about romance. So oh. the question is, Ooh. I don't really play games with romance in them, but uh, in the first Dying Light game, Jade and Crane had um, somewhat of a relationship, romantic relationship going on. Wait, hold on, who's Jade? <laughs> hold up, hold up guys. Jade, who? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, didn't she die like five minutes in or something? Or maybe she didn't? Yeah, I don't know. Anyways. Okay, so the next one is the heavy so one. It's a, zombie and... it's a zombie game where you fucking cut off the heads of zombies and enemy humans with melee weapons. I don't think romance is gonna really be on the mind of anyone in a situation like this. Un uh, unless, maybe they like someone enough and they want to make the time to go on dates while zombies are mucking about and waddling through the streets as they look for human brains to feast on. Y you know what? Yeah. Yeah, that could work, couldn't it? I, I mean, I wouldn't put it past people in a city like this to be so lustful as to just be, you know, fucking in the middle of an apocalypse. P people are horny. So, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Let's get back to the fucking video. Which ending of the following is canonical? Ooh. So, it's still a little bit too early to say oh. it all to you guys, but oh. um, let me just tell you that the events in Dying Light, Light 2 and the events that have led up to Dying Light 2 are very strongly connected to what happened in the first game. 
as so a when you play Dying Light 2, you will surely discover the answer to this big question. Hmm. D did Crane die or become a zombie? Hmm. 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 I don't know. So this one is actually very interesting. So please listen closely. <gasps> Will it be possible to recreate the technology and the government or perhaps people will be doomed to live in the modern dark ages for a long time? So forever. the question is straight forever. and simple. We to leave. don't want to give you an option to rebuild the government and technology and community as yeah, we know it today. Away the impact of it all. Why? Because to be honest, we thought that would actually be quite boring. We oh, know that stuff. That There's no point in rebuilding this. There goes another mm. one, and this is another one that we have been asked since the first E3 when we announced the game. So the question be is: asked. Will some forever. characters from DL1 be returning in this game too? Or and if so, then can you name a few? Or like, maybe ooh. it's confidential. So Dying Light Everyone 2 takes place in a completely different place and quite a lot of years after the events of the first Everyone one. So for this screen. reason, you will not encounter any returning characters from the first game. That's a way of saying they all just died off screen. Quite a lot of references sense. to what died. happened in the first game and also some of the characters. So please keep a close eye on what, what you will be able to find and discover in the game. Maybe we'll find the decapitated head of Kyle Crane somewhere in the game. Tell us, will That's there be more neat. open world events, such as the eye drops from the first game? Oh yeah, I remember those, yes, those were cool. Yes, there will be a lot more open world events in Dying Light 2. Oh, this is very, very important. It's oh, about very the factions important. in the game. So the question is, what can you say about the main factions in Dying Light 2? How do these two groups affect the entire city? So yes, there are two main factions in the Dying Light 2 world and it's up to you to decide which one of those you want to side with. Uh, so um, the thing about them is that their strategy to survival differs. So first of all... I just want to say this before continuing on. I hope that they they aren't too biased with one faction or, over the other, and it's like this. These are the good guys. These are the evil bad guys. Like no, have them both be a, a little morally gray at the very least, and show that no matter which side you join, shit's not perfect. But these factions have their reasons for doing what they do and operating the way they do. Oh, I nearly fucked up my microphone there. I I. Moving on. First of all, there are the peacekeepers, and these are the strong military types. So they, they, they focus mostly on combat. They want to kill all of the infected that are out there. So they build uh, powerful weapons, they build powerful traps, and they um, work kind of like this military regime. I the see. other faction is survivors and they want to adapt, they just want to survive, so they adapt to the environment, building their communities, uh, planting fields uh, and also investing and focusing on traversal. They don't they got, fight like, that much, they here? just want to be able to travel the city easily and escape any threats. So if you side with them, you bullet will be fetching like more and more of their, of their um, uh, traversal helpers and you will be able to use that as well. There are other groups in the city. The next important one is the renegades and they are basically the bad guys. So you will face oh. them and you will have to make well, some decisions amazing. how you want to deal with them. And then there are also smaller groups which are used mostly in side quests or as awesome like people, additional Hello. background characters for the main quests. Colorful people, colorful groups with uh, their own uh, ideas, agendas that you will be able to discover while you'll be playing Dying Light 2. Will I be able to side with no factions and be an enemy to all? Okay. Uh, so you have to Can understand that our world Number is extremely brutal, extremely primal and it's full of threats and conflicts. So if you have no allies, you basically die very quickly. Oh, that's And we assuring. don't want you to die very quickly and we also want you to make a decision. We also want you to make a statement. Okay. So a lone Excellent. wolf option is I'll not available. Statement. You will have to decide if you want to play with those guys or the other ones. And that's that. So there you go. Episode 2 of the AMA. And I gotta say, none of the questions here really felt too substantial in terms of the overall game. Some cool things here, but... Nothing I would really consider to be major or anything too big, but still some cool details like with the factions, for example, that that's pretty neat. You know, with the whole decisions and choices 
uh, system they've got in this game. It makes sense that you would join one uh, faction or the other, and they would all have their own agendas and stuff, which you would make a statement with. I'm going to make a statement about why I'm going to murder everyone in this game, even my own. Or maybe not. It depends on how useful they are. Or how useless they are. Not much else to say, really. Just, yeah. Another reaction. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. As well as make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe for future content coming soon. As well as turn on the notification bell and set it to all notifications. I already said that before, but I don't give a shit. Do it if you have it! It's a need. It's a necessity. So you should do it. Yeah. Anyways, I'll see you all next time. But until then, I'm out. Later.